Hey everyone and welcome to the video. I'm going to be walking you through the project logical editor and how we can use it to rename tracks in the project. We'll also be looking at the different track operations when it comes to renaming tracks. So first of all, let's open up the PLE. Now, if you haven't already, go to track visibility agents here and then just select project logical editor from the drop down list. It's one of the many ways you can get to it. Now to briefly summarize what the event target filters do and what the event transform actions do, um, think of them like this. Event target filters is basically what we're telling Cubase to look at or target. So this could be telling Cubase to look at muted tracks only, solo tracks, selected tracks, tracks with specific words in, whatever we can think of, we can pretty much tell Cubase to look at it and target it. And then once we have done that, we can then tell Cubase to perform an action to it, whether it's renaming it, deleting it, hiding it, enabling it. Actions are what we tell Cubase to do. Now, for this naming um, command, it's very basic, but what essentially we're going to do is tell Cubase to only target selected tracks to perform a naming operation to. So to set this up in our event target filters, we're going to click insert. And then here you will see we have filter target, condition and parameter one. For filter target, we're going to change the media type is to property. The condition, we're going to change this to property is set. And then for parameter one, we're going to change this to is selected. So this means Cubase is going to basically target anything that is selected in the project. Now the action is what we are going to tell Cubase to do. In this case, we want it to rename the tracks. So we're going to insert a new transform action and then under action target, we're going to change position to name. And then under operation, you will see it says not set. However, when you click on this, you will have a bunch of different operations you can choose from. Older versions of Cubase will not contain these last four operations, which will allow you to erase before, erase after, erase front character and erase end character. It will only show you replace, append, prepend, generate name and replace search string. However, we will be covering all of these in this video. So let's start with replace. Replace allows us to completely change uh, uh, the track name. It replaces everything. So if I want to change this to J with our current selection, I can click apply and it changes everything to J. Now append means we can add a word after what's already there in the track name. So if I put a space and type in J into parameter one, it'll put the word J after the numbers here at the end. Now, if I don't put the space in and just type J, it's going to put it after the last character. It won't put a space in, it will just apply it straight after the last character. So it's important to remember that for when you're naming things. Now, prepend is the opposite of append. It means it's putting the word before the track name. So again, it's the same thing. If I put J with no space, it's just going to glue it to contact. If I put a space in after J, it will put J space contact. Okay, so it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Now, generate name is exactly the same as using the operation replace. However, it allows us to assign a number to the track. So if I put J into parameter one and leave parameter two is zero, that means the first track will be J zero, followed by J one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, et cetera. Now we can also change the starting number. So if I want it to start at 11, I can add that into parameter two. And then when we click apply, the first track will be J11 followed by 12, 13, 14, 15, et cetera, et cetera. Now replace search string is probably the one you're going to be using the most. 
So here you can see we have uh, contact. I'm going to add J in. In fact, let's just change this first before we use this. Let's change it to something I can use. So J one two J three something silly like this will allow us to demonstrate replace search ring quite well. So I'm going to change that back to replace search ring. Now with replace search ring, it basically means we can target a specific word or we can target a specific combination of words um, that are in order. Now, if I want to just target the word two, I can type two into parameter one, but because there's also a space after it, I want to delete that space as well. So I'm going to add that in and then leave parameter two completely empty. And this means it will delete the word as you can see here. Now, if I want to replace the word two, I can just type out two. I don't have to worry about the space because I still want that space to be there and replace this with, I don't know, 10, like so. Now, let's say I want to replace 10 and J or just delete them. I can type 10 space J and then we'll add a space in after because I want to keep three and you know not have everything squashed together. Empty parameter two like so, and um, so that leads, and then click apply, and you'll see here it's, it's removed those words for us. Now, because it's very specific, um, if I wanted to remove this J here, I can see there's a space before and a space after. So if I put a space, then J, then space, leave parameter two empty, it's going to remove, oops, remove J, but I do need to remember to put a space into parameter two so it doesn't uh, bunch things up like that. So we'll add a space in and you can see, there you go. It's replaced everything there. The next one we're going to look at is erase before. So I can tell Cubase to erase everything before a certain word. So if I want everything deleting before the word three, I just type out the word three in parameter one, then click apply and it will remove everything before the word three. Erase after is exactly the same. It's just, you know, it works the opposite way. If I want everything to be deleted after the word one, I can do so. Now, erase front character is like, you know, when you're typing out a Word document and then you, you go, oh, I've mistyped it. And then you start pressing delete to delete the characters. It's doing that, but instead of deleting it from the end, it's deleting it from the start. So if I click apply, you'll see it removes the, the capital J. And then if I keep clicking it, it's just removing the characters after it. Now, the opposite of that is obviously erase end character. So this works like pressing delete uh, when you're texting or when you're um, typing out a Word document. So it's going to re remove the end characters like so. And that is all of the track operations inside of Cubase 12 when it comes to naming. Now, you can save these and make these a macro. So I'll quickly show you how to do this. Um, I'll just quickly create one. So generate name. We'll put this as GTR and then, you know, we'll start the track from one. Now, let's say I also want to assign a color to it as well. Uh, I'm going to quickly insert another action and then change the action target to set color. And then from the menu here, this is my own custom color palette. It will be showing the Cubase default one for you or whatever you've set your color palette to. I'm going to go for red six and then click apply. And you can see here it'll name on guitar, but also uh, apply the color as well. Now let's go ahead and save this as a preset. To do this, you just click on the preset tab at the top and go to save changes as preset. Now I'm going to name this something useful, name GTR and then red in brackets, so I know what it is. Next, we need to open up the key commands window. So go to edit, then key commands. From here in the top window, we need to navigate to the process project logical editor folder, as this will be the place where our command has been stored. Now, if you scroll down, you will see somewhere, wherever you've named it, there you go for me, name guitar red is viewable. What we're going to do is create a new macro using this command. If the macro area is not showing at the bottom here, just make sure you click on show macros. And then we're going to 
create a new macro by clicking new. I'm going to name this guitar red 01. That'll do. Now, after you've created it, select it and then make sure that our command is selected here in the top window and then click add. This will add it to the macro, which now means we can bind this to a keystroke to perform that command really quickly. Now, you will need to scroll up and find the macro folder. And then from here, you will see that macro has been created. So we can see GTR Red 01 is available and we can bind this to a key by clicking on this box here and then just typing out a keystroke. Now, if you suddenly see a bunch of text appear at the bottom, it means that that keystroke's already got something assigned to it. So don't overwrite it just in case it's an important function of Keybase that you use a lot and you get confused. Um, assign it to something that's got nothing. So for me, there you go, control alt shit, shit. <laughs> Control Alt Shift T has got nothing on it. Um, so we're just going to assign this. And then once we've done that, we can click OK. Now, this means when I press Control Alt Shift 2 on the tracks that I have selected, you can see we can apply that name generate and it will colorize them as well. So it's really, really useful. So hopefully, you found this useful. If you have, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, give it a thumbs down. And as always, thank you for taking the time to watch and I'll see you all in the next video.